Montgomery from rondramontgomery.com joins us now to tell us exactly what moved the markets. We are going to tell um, our viewers, or talk about your, your selling tips sure. for when to get rid of stocks later in the program. That's been quite well promoted on our Facebook and, and, twi and Twitter pages. But I'm, I'm going to try and beat you in popularity on Facebook though. I'm going to set you. myself a challenge. <laughs> Good luck to you. <laughs> um, in terms of the market, it, it's down again today. What's your take on what's happening at the moment? Do you know, let, let's put aside the sort of the day-to-day -day movement. And I appreciate that it's it's of interest to, you know, it, it helps talk, have something to talk about. But I, my real concern, and I've been doing a lot of work on this, when I was, when I was in Malaysia in, in the 90s, 96, 97, um, I remember, I remember standing on a, on a building and all I could see on the horizon were cranes. And the same thing in Indonesia, same thing in Singapore. Where are they and, in Sydney? Well, well I, remember, I remember in Malaysia particularly, I asked a, I asked a guy uh, who was interpreting and I asked a guy, why are they building this building here in, in a car park? And he said, oh, because the guy who's building this, he's, he went to school with the guy who's building that one. Right. And so they're, you know, he just wants to have a bigger building than him. And I thought that was absurd. And then I found out how many offices were being built and I asked for the population of KL and I remember them telling I remember thinking if all the people in Kuala Lumpur took one of these offices there'd still be vacant space and then shortly after that we had the, the fall of the Asian Tigers we had the Asian currency crisis same thing happened in Dubai with all of the construction that we saw there yep. that's imploded as well and it's happened in Florida I saw it happen in Florida it's happened in Japan right now in China there's 30 billion square feet of office and, and, and residential, uh, sorry, commercial and residential construction going on. Now that means 23 square feet for every man, woman and child in China. Now there's no way, there's absolutely no way all of that's going to be tenanted. Mm. Now it takes about eight years to pay off a house in London, takes about 11 years to pay off a place uh, in uh, New York, it takes 39 years to pay off an apartment in Beijing. Now, I reckon that that looks a lot like, to me, that looks a lot like Malaysia just before the Asian currency crisis. It looks like Dubai just before that imploded. And, and I'm really concerned about the impact of, of a, a bubble, a property bubble bursting in China. Right. So when I think longer term and, and I worry about the market, and I, you, I'm sure you're going to ask me, I, I'm, I'm raising cash again now, you know, I haven't got as many, as much money in the market. Um, it's because that most of the stocks that I look at, and you'll hear this throughout the program, but most of the stocks that I look at are expensive compared mm -hmm. to what I think uh, they're actually worth. And I'm going to be waiting two years for the value to catch up. And then I've got this, this worry that, you know, to me, it looks like a property bubble, a credit fuel property bubble in China. That's going to be damaging, I think, for anyone who supplies 70% or more of their output to China for building materials. So steel, aluminium, concrete, those sorts of things. Right. Um, so all analysts, all, all anyone analysing the risks of the market have to do is think about what are the companies in Australia that supply building materials or the base commodities for building materials and more than 70% is going to China? So my question is then, if, if viewers at home are, uh, are listening to what you've just said and, and you've essentially said, hey, I'm kind of waiting for a couple of years, what are you going to be saying to those people that said, well, you know, Roger Montgomery said we shouldn't be investing in the market for two years? Well, no, I'm not saying you shouldn't be investing in the market. When I look at buying today, right. you know, if I look at the prices for stocks today, and just remember, I'm not able to predict prices. I don't know what prices are going to do. All I can tell you is what things are worth. And, and I, look at, I look at some of the stocks that we're going to talk about tonight, mm. and it's going to take two years for the value to catch up with the current price. Now, I've, got, I've, I've made some very good returns because I bought, you know, obviously when, and we've been talking about it in the, when we're in the midst of it, you know, at the, at the market's lows and since then, and obviously the returns have been very good. But right now, I don't think, the ch I think the chances of those kinds of returns are very, very slim and the risk of actually losing money is very, very high. Mm. Uh, and so until I can find a great business that it's an, is an absolute bargain, I'd rather, have, I'd rather be in the safety of a bank account. And, and, and that's all I'm saying. So right now I can't find a lot of really good things that are cheap. OK, let's now talk about some of those stocks uh, that may be expensive by first of all taking a look at the bottom market movers by percentage change firstly on the All Lords. Coal shares down today by about 18%, at the moment $7.10. Do you like, dislike the company? It, it's just not a great 
To me, it's just a mediocre business. You know, all credit to Paul Little for, for being able... He took this company from nothing to a, you know, an enormous company. Um, but, but what most analysts and what most people investing are focused on is growth. They're focused on you know, your, what you were reading just there, you know, the, the comments that you made about Toll today. Mm. Um, it's about growth in profits and the profits slumped and profits are going to grow. And we're all obsessed with growth. You know, we really are. We want to know, you know, who's growing, who's growing fastest, who's growing slowest, who's declined. And then we focus on prices of everything, what house went up the most, what house went Absolutely. up. Absolutely. You know, but what we need to be focusing on is return on equity. We need to be thinking about the performance, the economic performance of the business. If I own a business, I'm not thinking just about, I'm not thinking about just what I'm getting out of that business. I'm thinking about how much do I have to put into the business to get those profits out. Now, with Toll Holdings, the return on equity, you know, it's just not stunning. Um, you've got in 2006, nine and a half, sorry, 2008, nine and a half percent, 2009, 12 percent, 2007, point six of one okay. percent. They're just not inspiring numbers. You really want to buy a business at a cheap price that's generating 20, 30, 40 percent returns. And there's no shortage of them. There's plenty out there. I own some. Mm. But this business um, in the next three years is forecast to generate return on equity of between 12 and a half and 14 percent. I've got it. I reckon it's worth in 2012, it'll be worth $6.37. And it's trading at sort of seven dollars now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's get your take though on, on Lendlease because shares in that company down also after months of speculation. Lendlease deciding to tap the market for eight hundred and six million dollars. The property giant says the move is to fund equity positions in private pu public private partnerships to accelerate major pipeline projects and to secure targeted investment opportunities. What do you think of Lendlease? I kind of wonder why companies pay dividends and then say they need money to grow. Fair enough. You know, wh why pay the dividend in the first place? If you need the money, keep the money mm. and use that for growth instead of issuing more shares and diluting everybody so that everybody on a per share basis owns less of the company. Um, this company has had the benefit of $2.2 billion that's been put in and left in the company over the last decade um, or a little bit more than a decade. Is that not enough? Mm. You know, I mean, and the return on equity that it's generating, again, 11%, 12%, 12% over the next few years. So, so I, one, I don't like companies that grow by acquisition, that grow by raising um, capital and diluting everybody. But you imagine if you owned Lendlease outright right. and the CEO of Lendlease said, listen mate, you know, I want to want to do some stuff. You know, do you mind grabbing your checkbook and you know giving me three, four, five billion dollars? That's that's what I need. Mm -hmm. You'd be sort of saying, well I've got to ring a friend, you know, I'm gonna find out whether or not I can actually do that. Um, I prefer companies that grow organically. They actually generate enough cash more than they need and they use that for growth opportunities if that's what they want to do. Um, so this particular business, look I've got it valued uh, currently at $5.65 going to six fifty one and then seven dollars forty in two thousand and twelve. Right. And it's trading at above that now. Okay. It's trading well above that now actually, almost ten dollars. So the couple of stocks that we've spoken to so far are relatively expensive. I'm a real Cassandra today, <laughs> aren't I? You know, we'll sorry. see we'll see what you've got to say uh, after the break.